G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. It'll be Christmas soon and what do you give the man who has everything? Antibiotics, of course, but what do you give the man who has nothing? Well, if he wants to get into mini quad racing or flying mini quads, then maybe this thing. This is the Swift 2 and it says here, one of the best racing drone. They forgot the S, never mind. It is a ready to fly mini quad package and let's have a look and see what you get. But of course we don't unbox stuff here, so that's what you get. And we'll take a bit of a closer look at all the stuff that comes in this box because the claim to fame for this thing is that there's almost everything you need right there in the box. You don't have to buy much at all. Only four AA batteries for the transmitter. So let's see what you get for your money and how it all stacks up. Okay, you do get a hell of a lot of stuff in this box. You get the mini quad and it's all built up, all pre-tuned apparently, ready to go. You get two batteries, three cell batteries, and these are surprisingly 2600 milliamps, which probably not bad because I'll tell you who this is intent, what market this is intended for in just a moment. You get a charger and a power lead for the charger. It's a balance port charger so got the connectors there for two, three or four cells and it charges about three amps I think so that's going to charge in a reasonably good time. Um, you get a transmitter, this looks like the i6s, it's a fly sky transmitter, it's been customized a bit because it's got these different labels on here. It's a really nice transmitter, it's really not a bad transmitter at all and I do love the color and it's got this rubberized coating on these grips here makes them very very um, you're not going to drop this easily this feels really good quality I like that transmitter it's a really nice bit of kit and I'll be taking a look inside that later on um, and you get three spare props or four spare props a whole set of spare props different color if you don't like the yellow or peachy colored ones and look at this you get a spanner now a lot of the RTF and a lot of the plug and fly ones come with crappy little plastic spanners or even carbon fiber spanners which just don't really work well on the nuts because they're just not strong enough. This however, <laughs> this comes with a spanner from Wang Bang Tools. Wang Bang Tools, I hope we can see that. Let me see if I can get a better look at that. Um, Wang Bang Tools, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's a proper open-ended ring spanner so you can use it for your prop nuts and I think, does it fit the SMA connector as well on the, e um, hang on, I'll tell you because this has already comes. This comes with everything and pre-installed. Now, does that fit there? Yes, it does. So you can even undo your antenna with that. Everything you could want in the package. The only thing that doesn't come in the package is the batteries. I have to put some own batteries in there. So four AAs. You can use alkalines or rechargeable nickel metal hydrides if you want to. It's up to you, but I'm surprising. Ship it with lipos, but no battery for the transmitter. Meh. I don't know. Um, it's a very small thing, but. Let's talk a little bit now about who this product is made for. And if you're a, if you already fly mini quads or RC models of any type, you're probably going to go click on the product link in the description of this video to go to the manufacturer's website and have a look at this product. And you're going to go, oh my god, that's so expensive. And yeah, it is a spendy product. This is not a cheap setup. This is not cheap. This is not, but this is not for people who already have models and or who are willing to put in the time and effort to learn a bit about them build one, tune the flight controller, you know, reprogram the SCs, perhaps get it all working. This is for someone who is cash, ri cash rich and time poor. And there are an increasing number of people like that out there because in today's modern world, a lot of us are working really long hours. We just don't have the time to put stuff together. And a lot of people are not so much interested in building and tuning. They just want to fly, want to fly and have fun. So this package is for them and it'll cost you more. But the idea is that you pay a little more and save us. Not load of time, effort and frustration if soldering wires and all that sort of stuff isn't your bag. So this is supposed to be ready to fly out of the box. We'll, we'll check that out, we'll find out. But uh, let's take a little bit of a closer look at the quality of the quad itself to start with. Right, the basic design's pretty sound. It's got a uni plate here, which does the arms and the top of the body. This is 3.8, 3.7, 3.8mm carbon, which is quite thick. Um, I don't know why it's not exactly four, but it's, you know, whatever. It looks like 3K twill on there. And it's, yeah, I like the fact from an engineering perspective, there's some nice gentle curves here, nice gentle curves there. So the stress risers are not going to be, you're not going to have a stress riser where the arm meets the body. Um, wasn't quite so impressed with the fact that they've put a hole here at one of the thinnest parts of the arm, which effectively reduces the strength of that arm by 30%. But we'll see whether that's an issue. Um, we'll do some crash testing, I have no doubt. Again, there's some holes cut in here, but there's no, it's not for ventilation because there's nowhere for the, there's something underneath here that stops the air getting in. And so that again reduces the strength of this part of the frame by 50%. Again, it may not be an issue depending on how the rest of the frame is designed, but okay. 
Uh, the ESCs are obviously mounted inside the body, which means they're probably not stock ESCs. They're probably a, um, uh, a special board, probably an all-in-one board, I don't know. We will find out. Uh, I like this. It has a rubber pad on top of the body where you put your battery, so it's not going to slide around. So many of these ready-to-flies or plug-and-flies come without the rubber, and the battery just slides all over the carbon, and it, it makes it much easier to break your battery strap and so forth. Yeah. You know, small thing, but important. Motors are 2205s, 2300. That's pretty standard for the uh, for the industry today. Uh, surprising. This remember, this is going to be a quad that's probably going to be for beginners. I say the market for this is people who don't have any quads, don't have any RC gear, just want to buy something off the shelf and go fly it that afternoon. This. Um, this means that you don't really need high spec. These people are not going to be hooning around. Now, I have to say, I was quite surprised to read in the manual that they claim the top speed's 150 kilometers an hour. To be totally honest, I know there's a lot of power on those 2205 motors, but 150 kilometers an hour, that's probably not really realistic for this quad. Uh, I know that even things like the Bolt, the Bolt 210, which I was flying, excuse me while I reach for the manual, the Bolt 210 I was flying in the last review, that's got a top speed of about 140, 145, and this is not a Bolt 210. A lot more area on this quad. If you look at that, see the, these, these wide arms and wide body, more drag. So I wouldn't expect this. I'd say this is probably about 120 full throttle, just looking at it from what I've seen there without even flying it. But I could be wrong. We will check this out in the, um, in the review. Now, I'm going to look at a couple of the negative things, the things I'm not quite so happy with with this model, because it's, it's not perfect, nothing's perfect. But let's take a look at the things that, as an engineer, I probably would have done differently. Right now, we're looking at the front of the quad. There's the camera, as you can see. And if we look at these, uh, the bolts, I'll just find something to point with, which I had before. Here we go. Uh, if we look at these screws here, these are not the normal cap head screws that you see on most quads. This is actually a, a countersunk screw, which means it's, it ends up being flush with the surface of the carbon, if it would stay focused, which it won't, as you can see. So these are flush with the surface of the carbon. They don't protrude above it. And that's, that's wonderful because it gives you a nice smooth surface on the top and a nice smooth surface on the bottom where we also have these bolts. Come on, focus. There we go. So you can see how smooth that is. Problem is, from a structural engineering point of view, it significantly weakens the frame because instead of having the full, and this is about 1.8 millimetre, that carbon plate, the full 1.8 millimetres of carbon, because it is countersunk in here, come on, focus, oh, never mind, anyway, it's countersunk in there, it's much easier for these bolts to pull through and leave, just leave a hole in the carbon. So I would have just used an ordinary cap heads and kept the carbon full thickness here, would have made for a much stronger setup. The, the, the standoffs here are much more likely to pull out or get bent, basically, you know, sort of rip along there than on a normal thing. Um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't countersink it. It's not worth it. I mean, no one gives a rat's ass whether the bottom of the quad is smooth or whether it has little screws poking out. All the other quads that you look at pretty much have the screws poking out. And if you really want to go sort of halfway in between, you can use a, a round head cap screw, which gives you a, a smooth surface, but also gives you the full, um, you know, basically it's a little dome shaped one. Uh, that'd be a better option as well. Okay, now the other thing is, um, as I said, there is this cutouts in here, which, yeah, Whatever. Hey, look, it's got a CE. You don't see many mini quads with a, C with a CE certificate, and that's pretty damn good. FCC. Everything seems to be tickety boo. If you're a little bit of a, a nut for the symbols, it's got them all. Fantastic. Now, another thing I'm not totally chuffed to bits with is these antennas because they're just flopping in the breeze here. That's just waiting to be sucked down into the prop arc and get all chopped up. And I know that because on other quads I've had with antennas even stiffer than this, they've got sucked in and chopped up by the props. So I would like to see a far better mounting arrangement for these. Um, that's just, it's just wait, asking for trouble. Even on some of my ones where the antennas are underneath, they still get chopped by the props. You've got to keep them out of the prop arc. I can see this being a bit of an issue when you start getting a few flights on. Yeah, especially if you're doing things like you know, pirouetting around and doing flips and things. These things actually can get quite wildly out of shape in respect to the body of the quad. That's going to cause you a little bit of a loss of antenna. Yeah, simple thing. Maybe, um, don't know what we'd do there. You'd have to, yeah, even putting heat shrinkers isn't going to stop them from flopping around too much. So I may look at, uh, yeah, don't know. Have to come up with an idea there. But I'll fly it as it is. I have a feeling that I'm going to be retrimming the antennas uh, within a few flights. But who knows? Now, the other thing is this FPV antenna here. You can see, if I can get the camera angle right, it's not that easy. Um, for a start, it is a semi-rigid coax. So it'll bend backwards and forwards. That's, that's fine. Um, most of the impacts are going to be from the front when you hit a tree or you're coming upside down at speed. 
I'd like to have seen a little bit of support here so that the stress isn't put entirely on that SMA connector. All it would take is um, something across the back of this platform here, just so that it, it bent at that point and just didn't transfer the stress to the SMA. Small thing, but hey, if you buy one of these, you buy it on a, maybe you get given it for Christmas and on Boxing Day you break the antenna, you're going to be highly pissed off because you, know, you have to wait until the shop's open to get you know, a new part if you can get one. So yeah, those are little things. The other thing I noticed is it has a camera. This is a, uh, I think it's a CMOS camera. So mm, we'll see how that performs. Some of the new CMOS are doing pretty damn good. So I won't pillory it for that because uh, we'll wait and see. But what I have noticed is if you want to put an action camera on there, you might be out of luck. I'll just reach into my bag of tricks and grab some cameras. Perhaps two cameras that you might be familiar with. Got my Xiaomi Yi. Ching. Okay, that'll fit on there. See that? No, it won't. <laughs> I'm afraid that if we look at this, oh, see, you see the propellers actually will hit. They'll hit an action camera if you mount it straight on there. And even if you put a tilt up, you're still going to be you know, so close. In fact, yeah, no, it'll still hit if you've got an angle on it like that. So um, it's going to have to be lifted up and tilted. But trouble is, you've got this antenna here. That antenna is so short that if you put something like a GoPro or a Xiaomi, it, you're going to have to bend that back a bit. And even then, with the angle, it's still going to be running really close to the camera. It may cause some issues. Um, so mm, they didn't think through the camera side of things very well. Even if you have something like a GoPro, sorry, not a GoPro, a, a, a Mobius or a Run Cam, look how much that sticks out the front. And you can see that it's going to be in, put a bit of tilt on, it might be better. But even then, once you get some tilt on this camera, it's probably going to be in the field of view. And also, it's going to be certainly the first thing that hits a tree. <laughs> so you might wreck your camera on here. This, this platform simply isn't really very big and there doesn't seem to be any kind of mounting facility. There's no way to put your, there's no, no way to put a Velcro through or anything like that. So, oh, what's that down the bottom? No. So they didn't really think that through. Whoa, hang on, hold the presses. I found some stuff in the box that I didn't see before. And yes, they have thought about camera mounting, but I think only if you've got a genuine GoPro. They give you this little bracket here with some screws, which obviously must screw onto here some how, how does that, I don't, I don't know how that's going to screw on there. Um, yeah, because this is, uh, that goes that way, so this has to screw back to, nah. Um, yeah, they've thought about it, but they really haven't done anything practical because there's no way I can see to screw that onto there. Um, and they give you this plastic bracket, which is um, okay if you've got a GoPro, but if you've got a Xiaomi, it's exactly the wrong size. And the button, let's try it this way around. Yeah, it's the wrong size and there's like yeah it's for a GoPro but if you've got a Xiaomi Yi or an SJ1000 or a, a Mobius well sorry you're still out of luck. Um, the camera is tiltable I think you'd have to back this one's really tight so um, you can see there's a little set of holes and a little arc there so you can tilt the camera that's great um, but you have to loosen the screws off a bit to do it. it's too tight to tilt on this one but that that's really the only negatives I can see in this whole thing, apart from that, yeah, it's pretty tickety-boo actually. It'll, uh, it'll be an interesting machine to fly. And as I say, oh, I better show you also, it has LEDs on the back. Everybody loves LEDs. Shame it doesn't have LEDs on the bottom of that because I know for a fact that when you're trying to find one of these, if it's getting late at night, LEDs can be a real asset. You can see them in the long grass. Having said that, let me show you this. We'll just go back to the transmitter for a moment and on the back of the transmitter, there's a couple of buttons called alarm. And of course, the quad has a little beeper in it, so you can just press this button and it'll beep away to tell you where it is. You can track it down by ear, but if you're deaf, you're a bit out of luck, I suppose, but I don't know. Um, transmitter itself, is, it's quite nice. It's got two dual power buttons, so yeah, it plays in an irritating little tune. Um, it's a touch screen, which is kind of cool. This is, as I say, it's the i6S. Um, it has a touch screen, so you can go through and adjust all your bits and pieces. It's quite cool, um, very nice. It has, just if you haven't seen the i6s, it's got two position, two position, three position, two position. This is actually labelled up here. It's got the um, stabilised mode, advanced, intermediate. This is equivalent to rate mode, uh, sorry, self-leveling angle mode, and the advanced, which is rate mode, but it shouldn't be in the middle. I think there was probably an error there. That uh, This may be, I'll, Check it out when I fly it, but I have a feeling that it would be angle mode, horizon mode, rate mode. Don't know. It doesn't seem to be an air mode. If 
facility, but remember this is for beginners, so probably not that much of an issue. Um, switch to turn the OSD off and on, that's great because I hate those artificial horizons. With that switch you can turn off the artificial horizon. And I don't know why you'd ever want it on. Even beginners, you've got a real horizon there you can see. Why bother with an artificial one? And over here we've got lights on, so that's those LEDs, you can turn those off and on. And this is the arm switch, which they've called motor lock. So you can lock motor, unlock motor. It's, it's just arming, just arming. So when you flick that on, the motors will start spinning, you're ready to fly, flick it off, they'll stop. Pretty simple really. Um, apart from that, it's got a neck strap. It's got a little screw base here, you can probably put anything with a standard uh, camera mount screw base on there, so you could put an LCD screen or an attachment for your smartphone, goodness knows why. I suspect that Swell Pro use this transmitter on all their quads, and they do make quite a range of them. You can have a look at the website, they've got waterproof ones, all sorts of things. So, yep, that's obviously just a standard fixing, what is it, standard fitting to the i6s, so, you know, you can use that if you want to. And let's turn it off. Again, you have to use both, but both buttons, and it plays another irritating little noise that you can turn off. Has telemetry, I should have showed you. It has transmitter battery and receiver battery telemetry, which is absolutely useless on a uh, any electric model these days because all the receivers get a fed a very healthy five volts from the BEC or the um, whatever it is that powers your receiver. So it's not really just a bit of a frivol thing. Okay, as I said, it takes four AA batteries. We've got a USB in there, which is probably for updating the firmware. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But um, it's got stickers on it. It's cool. Um, Nice transmitter, I do like that. And so I'll do a teardown of this transmitter later. I have to say, when this one arrived, it did rattle. It had a rattle because there was a screw in it. So I had to tear it down anyway, take a look and find the screw. The screw had actually come out of one of the stick units because, unfortunately, this, the hole in the stick unit was way oversized, so the screw wouldn't even screw in. So, a bit of quality control. It's FlySky, okay? It's made to a price. But the FlySky stuff's come a hell of a long way since the original 9X, and I'd happily fly this thing. It's a really nice bit of kit. The benefit of this is that, remember, this is going to people who have nothing. They've, you know, someone who's never flown a model or a drone before. With this transmitter, you can buy, I'm pretty sure, I'll check it out later, you can buy any of the new FlySky receivers and bind it, the AF, HSS or whatever, and bind to this. So when you've decided you want to go beyond this quad, you can build a new quad and you can use the same transmitter. Woo -hoo! You don't have to reinvest in a new transmitter. So yeah, there you go, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at these batteries and the other bits and pieces we got. Right, they provide two batteries, and surprisingly enough, they're 2600 three-cell packs. 2600 is awfully big for a mini-quad, and you'd think that would compromise the performance, but I gather that, well, with a 2205 motor, I mean, you're probably going to get heaps, heaps of performance anyway, and these will give you a pretty good flight time, I suspect. So I'll be testing it with these batteries, and the fact you get two of them is great, because you know one is never enough. You're not going to get much flying time if you go out there and try and fly your mini quad with one battery, even if it's 2600 milliamps. So that's great. Two batteries, it's a really good thought. That's fine. Um, as I said, you get the four extra props, and you also get, if I can find what I've done with it, oh no, don't tell me. Oh, here we go. Yep. You also get spare motor nuts because these are clockwise counterclockwise motors. I actually hate clockwise counterclockwise because if you lose the uh, the rot, the nut that's the reverse thread, it's hard to find a replacement. This gives you a spare nut of each in case you lose it and some spare feet because these little plastic feet, they do break off in a really hard crash. Those little legs, the hands see hanging down there. I don't see the point in having them actually. Motor guards are great, but little feet, yeah, should rest on the bottom of the body. It wouldn't be a problem. So, um, if you do end up breaking them and you run out of these, just break the others off and have it sit on the body. But, you know, beginners shouldn't be a problem. You're not going to be hammering it if you're just a beginner. Now, the only problem I've got is that this comes mode two with the throttle on the left, and I fly mode one with the throttle on the right. So what I'm probably going to do initially is I'm going to give this to someone who hasn't flown or very little mini quad flying in the mode two configuration and let them have a go and see how they get on because, as I say, that's the intended market for this. It's not for the guy that's already got half a dozen quads and wants something else. It is the market where people have nothing and they'll be starting with mode 2. We'll see how they get on flying it, which is going to be a great testimony to the strength of it and how well it's tuned and also how well the manual is. And the manual is actually pretty good. I haven't showed you the manual yet. It's, um, it's not a bad little manual. It's shiny. Look, shiny. That means it's um, you know, not just a bit of A4 photocopy paper with some inkjet printing on it. No. And important things. Do not blink because it's fast. There you go. So you, how are you going to fly without blinking? Your eyes will get really dry and itchy. Never mind. Uh, so... Yeah, I'll give this to someone else to fly and then I will convert it to mode one and I'll try and put it through its paces and see how it flies once you've got past that early learning stage, okay? So there you go. Now, as I say, it's not a cheap product. Go to the website and be totally horrified, but remember, if, if you are horrified, it's not for you. It's for somebody else who doesn't have much time but has more money than you 
and that's not a bad thing. Now I have to also say that they sent me in the package a set of video glasses, which I've also lost. How can you lose things? Yep, as I say, spring clean going on here. So there is a set of video glasses, which I will also show you in the next, I found them. They're over the other side of the bench. Excuse me, here we go. So remember I said that everything you needed but four AA batteries. Well, that's not quite true because if you want to do some FPV, you're going to need some video glasses. And the people at Swell Pro have sent this. This is what they're selling. This is the Sky Zone version two. It's the white ones here. And so you can buy this from them. So you end up, you can actually buy everything you want from the one place. And that's got to be good if you're looking to give someone a gift or give yourself a gift. You've been looking at these mini quad things as drone racing thinking, I'd love to have a go at that. Oh, great. But gee, you know, how am I going to find the time? Well, you don't have to find the time because these people have done it. And you buy this and you buy the, uh, the little, what is it? I've forgotten the name of it already and I've lost the box. How can that happen? Uh, the Swift 2, buy the Swift 2 and this from the same place. And you'll be flying in all, only the time it takes to charge those batteries, which will be about 45 minutes per battery. So there you go. Um, I will now, that's part one, just looking at all the kit you get. Next part, I'll find somebody around here who doesn't know how to fly mini quads, which is most people. Get them out there and we'll film them and see how they get on. Just, I'll give them the box, they can go from scratch, we'll time them, we'll see how well they fly it. Then once they've had a good go at breaking it, I'll get stuck in, I'm sure I can break it. So, thanks for watching. Now if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place, I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching, time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now. Actually, no, just before you go, I've got some fun things to share with you. Bit of Chinglish from the manual. Uh, first of all, as I said, don't blink because it's fast. But then we've got down here, what did I find? Something that's really funny. Um, it has ruggedness and anti-droppability. Oh my goodness, I wish they'd sell that as a separate feature because I could sure do with a lot of that. My shaky hands, anti-droppability is fantastic. I think they're referring to the rubberized grips on the transmitter. But it's also, it is the most considerate radio controller. Now that's fantastic. I'm just getting fed up with arrogant radio controllers, inconsiderate radio controllers that cause me to crash my planes. This is fantastic. This is worth the money alone, okay? Yeah, I'm taking the piss, but hey, it's kind of nice to have a manual that's not only informative, but entertaining.